I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network, and this is a breaking news alert. We are learning additional information right now about just how dangerously and irresponsibly Donald Trump would handle classified records. And one way we're learning this right now is through the release of an audiobook by legendary journalist Bob Woodward. And Woodward, who famously wrote the book on Donald Trump called Rage, conducted 19 lengthy interviews with Donald Trump in connection with that book. And Woodward next week is going to be releasing an audio book called The Trump Tapes, Bob Woodward's 20 Interviews with President Trump. And uh, in many of these tapes, you see just how easy it was for Bob Woodward to get his hands on information that would be classified records. It would also show that Donald Trump had knowledge that he was sharing information that he shouldn't share as part of his vanity project for this book with Bob Woodward. One of the main pieces of information that is highlighted uh, in the uh, audio exchanges between Bob Woodward and Donald Trump is Donald Trump boasting about the letters he exchanged with Kim Jong-un. In all, there were approximately 27 letters that Donald Trump exchanged with Kim Jong-un, weird, bizarre letters where they would describe how great each other each other are and um, how uh, impressive they were and how strong they were. Just really, really weird stuff. Um, and first in 2019, Donald Trump shared the letters that he got with Kim Jong-un, which he had told Bob Woodward, I'm not supposed to share this with you. This is, you know, top secret stuff I'm giving to you, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. And then Bob Woodward asked in 2020, hey, can you actually give me the records of the uh, communications you sent? Uh, and Donald Trump responded, quote, oh, those are so top secret. Um, that I can't give them to you, but then he did give those to Bob Woodward and allowed Bob Woodward to essentially transcribe uh, all of those letters um, as part of his book. Again, very, very, very unusual stuff. One of the things that Bob Woodward points out as an aside in the book is just how irresponsibly Trump would uh, handle these top secret records. And one of the things that uh, was pointed out, he writes, um, as an aside in the book, Woodward describes, quote, the casual, dangerous way that Trump treats the most classified programs and information, as we've seen now in 2022 in Mar-a-Lago, where he had 184 classified documents, including 25 marked top secret. Um, and that was in reference to Trump making statements about his weapon systems or what he claims were weapon systems that he helped develop uh, for the United States. And this is what he said about them. He said, quote, I have built a weapon system that nobody's ever had in this country before, he said, uh, referring to Russian Vladimir, President Vladimir Putin and Chinese President Xi. Um, quote, we have stuff that you haven't even seen or heard about. We have stuff that Putin and Xi have never heard uh, before. We actually have, I think, the audio of that interview here. Let's just play that audio right now for you. I have built a weapon system that nobody's ever had in this country before. We have stuff that you haven't even seen or heard about. We have stuff that Putin and Xi have never heard about before. Getting along with Russia is a good thing, not a bad thing, all right? especially because they have 1,332 nuclear warheads. And in addition to that, one of the things that Trump constantly would repeat to Woodward was, again, his obsession with all of his conversations with Kim Jong-un. And uh, he would say, and this was completely debunked by all military analysts and all of our uh, intelligence agencies, but Trump would claim that Kim Jong-un had told him that Obama had tried to reach out to Kim Jong-un 11 times. And this is what Trump said. This is on the audio in his interviews with Bob Woodward. And he kept on saying this over and over again. He would tell Bob Woodward, quote, Obama called Kim Jong-un 11 times. Kim Jong-un showed me the records in Korea. I'm very close to this man. I'm very, very close to this man. He showed me. It was 11 times. Obama wanted 
11 times he tried. Kim Jong-un told me 11 times, like literally repeating it over and over again. And Bob Woodward would say, uh, it's widely known in our intelligence community that Kim Jong-un is someone who you can't trust. Kim, quote, lies through his teeth to you. Obama never made any attempts to speak with Kim himself. Kim Jong-un, Mr. Trump, is giving you bad information on that. It is not true. I don't think that's true, Woodward would tell Trump. And then Trump kept on repeating. Obama called 11 times. He wouldn't take Obama's call, but he would take my call, not Obama's call, uh, my call. Um, but given all we know right now about the search warrant executed at Mar-a-Lago, um, going back to what Bob Woodward said, the very casual, dangerous way that Trump treated classified records. I mean, here you have Bob Woodward, a journalist who is, you know, clearly trying as the journalist to, uh, you know, get his hands on as much material as he can to write this book. And Donald Trump just like very freely would share records that he shouldn't have shared, that he was not allowed to share as part of his vanity project, just whipping out these letters from Kim Jong-un and letting reporters copy it and then bragging about weapon systems to uh, Bob Woodward. You know, and it just makes you think as well about just how irresponsibly, and this is Bob Woodward's point, um, as he releases this uh, audio book, basically like, he gave me all these records, these classified records that I was able to easily transcribe. Just think about how irresponsible that is and was for anybody else who Trump in undoubtedly who would show up at Mar-a-Lago, who undoubtedly Trump would brag and show these letters and show them as trophies and just hand out our classified documents, you know, to whoever uh, wanted to see them. I'm definitely going to, uh, I'm going to check out that, that audio book. Um, I do wish though, and, and wish is probably too light of a word. You know, I, I am very frustrated in the media generally here um, that it takes a book to come out before information like this is revealed. And in order to sell books, this information is essentially, you know, hoarded. Um, I think it's vital that media reports on these things concurrently, contemporaneously, and not let fascism fester. And then um, in a post-mortem, after the nations endured such a great deal of suffering, uh, provide the context of what actually took place. I mean, I, I think that's irresponsible uh, journalism. But nonetheless, I'm happy that we're knowing about it now, that it's providing us with more information about Donald Trump's uh, criminal intent here, how it gives us some insight into how he used, you know, classified records. Um, you know, and of course, there were thousands and thousands of uh, government records that he was hiding in Mar-a-Lago. You know, there's over 11,000 documents right now that's part of the special master process. The government got back 103 of their uh, top secret sensitive compartmented information through the 11th Circuit uh, Court of Appeals ruling, which granted the motion for partial stay pending the expedited appeal where the Department of Justice is challenging Judge Eileen Cannon's assertion of equitable jurisdiction in the first place. So the Department of Justice has their uh, records back. Uh, but some of the information that Trump had we're learning is also likely nuclear uh, material information about nuclear programs and nuclear secrets, rather. Um, and Trump's gone in these rallies and lies, and he says that, oh, the National Archives, they, they planted uh, nuclear records at my uh, residence. Or he went to his social media and posted uh, the National Archives, and falsely, of course, the National Archives loses nuclear secrets everywhere in Donald Trump's projection world that in a very scary way shows us that he's likely has nuclear secrets all over Mar-a-Lago. Um, and he's probably doing exactly what we see here uh, with Bob Woodward, with guests who show up and foreign dignitaries who show up and people who support him uh, from foreign countries like you know, it would not surprise me in the slightest that when uh, Saudi Arabia is hosting golf tournaments at Bedminster 
and Donald Trump is at these golf tournaments at Bedminster, uh, spreading conspiracy theories about 9-11 to cover for Saudi Arabia and saying that we haven't got to the bottom of 9-11. I mean, just think about that. Trump is inviting Saudi Arabia to play golf, to host a golf tournament, uh, a propaganda golf tournament at Bedminster, uh, spreading conspiracies about September 11th. At the same time, Saudi Arabia and the OPEC cartel is uh, harming our economy by raising uh, the price of crude significantly. Um, would you put it past him for a second? I'm sure he's showing them our nuclear secrets. I'm sure he showed it already. I'm sure he's sharing our classified records. I mean, that's my opinion, of course. But would that surprise you that that's why Jared Kushner is getting uh, received $2 billion from the Saudi Arabian Sovereign Wealth Fund to manage that amount of money when he's never been a fund manager before? I mean, come on. I mean, if you think that's not what he's doing with those records, we all know that he's very, very transactional with everything that he does. And why else would he be taking our top secret documents and hoarding it and um, obstructing and lying? You know, one of the things that I find just so uh, astonishing, so scary, though, and dangerous about this whole process is how intimately involved Donald Trump was in hiding these records. You go back to January of 2022 with the first wave of documents that were turned over to the National Archives after the National Archives has been relentlessly demanding these records back for about six, seven months when it became abundantly clear that Trump just stole these records. It's like Trump himself was the person who had packed these boxes and cherry picked the documents he wanted to return to the National Archives and lied and said that was everything that we got. The National Archives opens it up and like literally opens up newspaper clippings and sees top secret sensitive compartmented information, our nation's highest degree of classifications interspersed within like newspaper clippings like Trump like hid him. He packed it himself and he hid the secrets, the top secret sensitive compartmented information inside like newspapers. I get thinking that the, that the National Archives and our government would just be like, oh, we can't find him there. And then when the National Archives demands to get the records back, they don't get it. A grand jury subpoena has to be issued when the DOJ gets involved. And then Trump's lawyers submit a false declaration. They give one more red weld to the Department of Justice top counterintelligence official on June 3rd. Here's everything that we got. They sign a declaration saying there's no other records. We're now learning that there was surveillance footage at Mar-a-Lago. One of Trump's aides who's cooperating with the Department of Justice said as soon as that grand jury subpoena was issued uh, by the grand jury in May, Trump ordered this uh, aide to move the records. I think this aide was like his valet in the White House, um, then became his private aide, to move the records from the storage space and literally hide it in a new and different space. This individual is cooperating, submit a false declaration uh, through his lawyers to the Department of Justice saying everything's turned over and it wasn't turned over. Um, and then it took a search warrant executed at Mar-a-Lago on August 8th to identify 11,000 more documents, about 220,000 pages of records and uh, including 100 top secret classified records, additional records that were obtained during the uh, valid search warrant executed at Mar-a-Lago, but reckless, irresponsible, and just bizarre. I mean, the way he's talking about our weapons programs with this journalist, the way he's talking about Kim Jong-un, the way he's talking about how Obama tried to reach out to Kim Jong-un 11 times and that Trump trusts what Kim Jong-un tells him over our own intelligence, intelligence officials that Obama never reached out to Kim Jong-un, but Kim Jong-un said that Obama wanted to reach out to me all the time. The fact that Trump just buddies up with Kim Jong-un, I mean, one of the most d despotic and despicable foreign despots ever in mankind. I mean, that's who he's, he, that's who he's infatuated with and who he sucks up to. 
mean, it's really pathetic and dangerous and strange, weird stuff. I mean, that's, I don't care what political party you're from. That's not normal political behavior. That's weird, bizarre, strange behavior that all Americans should just say, that's anti-American. That's not our values. Anyway, we'll keep you updated here on the Midas Touch Network. Hit the subscribe button. We're on our way to 1 million subscribers. Thanks to you. Hit subscribe. It's free to hit subscribe. So I'm not sure what you're doing while you're not hitting subscribe. So hit subscribe right now. Additionally, if you want to support this independent media channel, we have zero outside investors. Zero. So if you want to help grow this network, I always get asked by people, what can we do to help grow this? The best thing you can do to help is go to patreon.com slash Midas Touch, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Midas Touch. There are a number of different exclusive membership packages. Some you can get postcards from me and my brothers behind the scenes, uh, footage, uh, additional exclusive podcasts, uh, exclusive posts, uh, exclusive merch drops. Uh, in one tier, you could even become an honorary producer of the Midas Touch podcast, and your name will appear at the end of the podcast I do with my brothers. Um, so lots of great stuff. And most importantly, it helps grow this network. And so I ask you, if you really do want to help, one of the ways you can do it is by signing up at patreon.com slash Midas Touch. We're on our way to 2,000 patrons um, in our first 60 days. So um, check out patreon.com slash Midas Touch and join there. Until next time, I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch. At Midas Touch, we are unapologetically pro-democracy and we demand justice and accountability. That's why we're spreading our message to Convict 45. That's right, gear up right now with your Convict 45 tees and pins at store.midastouch.com. That's store.midastouch.com.